The Lloyd Syndicate Chaucer is in the news today. According to the Insurance Insider, UK insurance group Brit Insurance has made a takeover approach to rival Lloyd's insurer Chaucer. Chaucer is currently raising 75 million pounds to plug a hole in its capital requirements caused by investment losses as well as the slump in the British pound. This was confirmed to the London Stock Exchange this morning. Chaucer said it has received fresh approaches, quote, which may or may not lead to offers for the entire issued share capital of the company. Chaucer is already in talks with fellow Lloyd's insurer Nove Group about a potential merger of the two firms. Ariel Re has denied that it is in talks with Chaucer. In an interview with Reinsurance Magazine, its chairman and CEO Don Kramer said, quote, we have never had talks with Chaucer. Ariel Holding already, of course, owns a Lloyd Syndicate, Atrium Holdings. Insurance companies that applied for capital injections from the U.S. government's $700 billion Troubled Asset Relief Program bailout fund, the TARP, might get approval as early as today. This is according to Reuters. Reuters is citing two unnamed sources familiar with the matter. Some insurance company recently already obtained approval to buy banks, which would allow them to participate in the government program. Uh, the program is part of the government's TARP program. Insurance companies could hear from the Treasury as soon as today about whether they are eligible for the injections. Now, it's presumed that these would be insurance companies that are applying through the bank route, as just mentioned. Uh, Hartford purchased the bank in Florida and uh, applied that way. So perhaps uh, uh, there'll be some news on that this afternoon. I do not think that these are individual applications from insurance companies to the TARP uh, bypassing the bank route. Uh, the article is unclear. We were unable to find any further information, so we're assuming these are the acquisitions made by insurers of financial institutions, of banks, to come in through the front door. In some other news, Connecticut-based WR Berkeley Corporation's fourth quarter net income dove 78% as investment losses soared. The insurer's payments for weather-related claims also doubled. According to CEO William R. Berkeley, quote, the tumultuous financial impacts, excuse me, the tumultuous financial markets in 2008 had an adverse impact on a small portion of our approximately $13 billion investment portfolio. Berkeley reported net income of $40.3 million, or 24 cents a share, down from $184 million, or 97 cents a share, a year earlier. Operating income, which excludes investment gains and losses, fell to $0.62 cents a share from $0.97. Cents. Revenue dipped 23% down to $1.08 billion. The company's combined ratio, or the percentage of each dollar they collect in premiums that it pays out on losses and expenses, increased to 92.6% from 88.7%. The company recorded weather-related losses of $6 million, up from $3 million a year earlier. In uh, the Chicago area, a holding tank at a Caterpillar facility in the Chicago suburb of Rockdale, Illinois, broke on Sunday, spilling about 65,000 gallons of oil sludge and contaminating a three-mile section of the Des Plaines River. The substance was reported to be hydraulic and cutting oil according to a spokesperson for the Illinois Emergency Management Agency. This official said that the spill is being contained. There is no evidence of a fish kill or harm to waterfowl. Most of the sludge spilled on land, but 6,000 gallons seeped into the Des Plaines River. Coast Guard said that the oil risk poses no risk to human health, but could be dangerous to animals in the contaminated area. Caterpillar, which is based in Peoria, confirmed in a statement last night that an undetermined amount of waste oil overflowed from the storage area at the company's manufacturing facility in Joliet. About an hour ago, the uh, flight of the U.S. airplane that landed in the Hudson River was at City Hall in downtown Manhattan to receive the keys to the city from New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Last night, the crew was interviewed on CBS's 60 Minutes by Katie Couric and Captain Sully Sullenberger, uh, with some aplomb and great calmness and confidence, presented the image of somebody who was completely in control during the whole incident on the 15th of January. The uh, film clip also showed a hangar in Charlotte, North Carolina, 
where for the first time the crew of the aircraft met with a number of the passengers who had been on board that day in January when the plane ditched in the Hudson River. It was enough to bring tears to the eyes of Captain Sullenberger and tears to the eyes of more than a few viewers. Job well done. Stock market is down about a point and a half now. Tomorrow supposedly is the day that the Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner is going to unveil the uh, banking relief program that President Obama has been working on. So we'll keep our eyes on that. If there's any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. If not, thank you for watching.